Let's talk about privacy, because of course, when we're concerned by data, privacy is a key issue. So why are we concerned with privacy? Well, data is the fuel for algorithms, and for these algorithms specifically that we are interested in, in artificial intelligence. And the data itself may come from various sources. Some of it is artificial, but it may come from more banking, from education, from health, and in all these cases, it is vital that individuals are not identified or cannot be identified by others unless they have given their consent for this to happen. So privacy is what ensures each of us that nobody else will have access to our own personal data, the private data that can be on these servers, or that they could even reconstruct this private data given some information that we have given elsewhere. So one of the options is just to avoid sharing data. Let's just not go on internet and do nothing. But of course, there are so many useful services and sometimes we have got no other option to do it. So really deciding that we don't want to share our data is somehow a handicap. Of course, the answer isn't to give everything away, the answer is to give whatever data we have to give away in conditions in which we feel safe. One of the answers we'll be talking about is technical, the other one is legal, and we will be talking about GDPR, which is the European instrument to protect citizens in this context. So the first key idea is called pseudonymization. So this is a tempting solution in which we take my name and replace my name by a code. So somebody who owns data sets will just replace all the names by some numbers and redistribute the information using those numbers. This sounds like a good idea, but this idea only works partially because there is a process called re-identification, which in certain cases is possible. Let's look at an example. We have a character which has now become a name. Can we find things out about this character once we have no longer got the person's name? So suppose we've got two databases. The private one on which we've got a lot of information on this person called Maureen O'Hara. And on the other hand, We've got some public databases because we may know where people come from or have access to uh, some information. And so if some of this public information is also present in the private database, then putting two and two together, we can reconstruct that a specific number in the private database actually corresponds to a person. We may not always be sure, but we will have a high probability of this happening. If you're in doubt, you can consult this um, website, which will actually show you how very unique each one of us is and how with very, very few questions, you can be located as being one unique person, which is good news, but it is at the same time bad news because it shows how easy re-identification is. So data re-identification or de-anonymization, so taking away the anonymous character of uh, a person, is the practice of matching on one hand the anonymous data and on the other hand the public data in order to find out information. So. If pseudonymization isn't the right answer because there is a way around this, is there another way to do things? And the answer is yes, it is called anonymization. And anonymization is supposed to make the user immune to possible re-identification attacks. Sadly, or anonymization is actually very hard technically to achieve. There are techniques, they require a lot of hard work and they require to be done by specialists. 
But one of the consequences of this being very difficult is that in certain fields, research is on data is much more difficult. This is the case of health or the case of education, which are both fields in which, of course, we do not want some individual uh, data to be shared in an open way. Another way to deal with data sets in a way to um, protect the individual users is called data aggregation. In this case, before sharing the data set, the company or the organization which wants to share some data will aggregate the data in packets. For example, all the children aged 10 will be averaged in order to give average results, making it difficult to get the results for one individual child. Finally, GDPR in this context is an important object. The General Data Protection Regulation was introduced by EU law and has been enforced for a number of years now. It is valid inside the European Union, but also outside it in certain conditions. The idea of GDPR is to protect the citizens against what uh, could happen because of re-identification. There are other issues, of course. But in this context, the context what matters is that the citizen has got the right of access, meaning that if the citizen believes that their name is inside a database, they should know what is inside the database. There is, in a limited way, the right of erasure, meaning that if one's name is inside a database and one would like that name not to appear, in a given lapse of time, we can ask for that name, for our name, to be taken out of a database. And the third of these rights is the right to object any automated decision. So typically a decision that can be made by artificial intelligence and ask for another decision to be made, this time by a human being. These decisions and these rules are extremely important and in the context of AI of education have got many applications.